Hello everyone, let's begin for 13th of August 2018, the Hindu analysis. The first news item, the center comes at Kerala's aid. So we know that the Kerala state has been completely fronted with respect to it. The center has been sanctioned almost like 1,220 crore from the National Disaster Response Fund. And the state which is seeing the floods right now is the worst experience which had happened since 1924. So there's other simultaneous funds and uh, certain aid which has been given by the centers. But the main highlight what you have to know is about the National Disaster Response Fund. The next one, ahead of Khalistan rally, India announces Guru Fateh. So this is with respect to the hearts ahead of the pro Khalistan rally in London. The external affairs minister Shushma Swaraj announced on Sunday that all Indian diplomatic missions would celebrate the 550th birth anniversary of the founder of the Sikh Guru Nanak, Faith Guru Nanak Saint. The move is seen to counter the rally with respect to the organized by the US based group. And in 2018, India has actually issued a demarche over the Khalistan rally. So this is to intended to drum up the support for an awareness of a non-binding referendum on a Sikh homeland in 2020 for an independent Sikh nation. So basically the Khalistan issues with respect to have an independent nation that we call is that Khalistan, that's an independent Sikh nation. And the British government, it also said that the people have their right to gather and express their views provided they do within the law. So the British government is okay with it and the pro Khalistani rally and a counter rally to support India took place in the central London. And then we have the, the rallies come up in the wake of the controversy over the shredding during the Prime Minister Narendra Modi visit in 2018 for which the police had faced the criticism for not intervening early enough. So this was again with respect to the controversy which has a campaign to it. And you should know the only one holy book that's a Guru Granth Sahib in the world which uh, apart from the 10 Gurus of the Sikh faith also contains the messages of the other learned saints and also the great souls. So your work becomes that you should know about the Saint Guru Nanak. That's about it. And this is about the slight information to what is Khalistan movement. So it happened in phase 1 1947 to 98 that is language issue and they demanded for a Punjabi that is Subha and also the diversion of the Punjab waters and in phase 2 there was actually attack on the golden temple and killing of thousands of Sikhs which is including with respect to the blue star operation where main causes of the Sikhs community demand for a separate homeland during the phase. So during this phase is where because of the blue star operation the separate uh, the homeland for the Sikhs started coming up from the Sikhs community and they also believe that the assassination of Indira Gandhi was also from the Sikh community after this particular attack. Third one, the Khalistan movement that's phase 3 that is from 1989 to till date wherein the officials propagate that the idea of the Khalistan, the state of Sikh community has become an old story. But again the Khalistan council comprising the Sikh organ has recently reasserted the demand for a set and the separate that's a separate Sikh state and vowed that the problem was not over and the Khalistan was the idea of the first guru of Sikhs and still popular in the rural areas. So you have to know more in detail about the blue star operations associated with the Khalistan. So this is about it. The next one. So this is with respect to Vidyadar Suraj Prasad Naipal. So it is actually a Trinidad born Indian origin author and a Nobel laureate. Uh, known for, for a very critical commentary on the colonialism and also the regional and the politics. So recently this person he lost his life who was 85 years at the time of his last breath. So here you have the complete details about the Vidyadar. The next one, ISRO set to launch its TV channel. So this is with respect to the plans to roll out the dedicated ISRO TV channel which would be showcasing the space applications, development and the science issues targeting the young viewers and all the people in remote areas in their particular languages. And also the ISRO's uh, tributes to Sharabai to start with naming the first Indian moon landing spacecraft of the Chandrayaan 2 mission that is named as Vikram. The mission is being planned for the early 2019. So we saw that ISRO has actually postponed to the respected to the launch of the mission because of the consequent uh, setback which has been happening and it's been tabled to 2019. So here again the same issue has been settled and here the public satellite launches. This is like ISRO wants to make it uh, a public to watch the satellite launches from Sri Harikota Lot Center. So as good as it. And you should know about the father uh, of the Indian space program, Mr. Uh, 
Dr. Vikram Sarabhai and you have his entire details out here. So the responsible for the establishment of Indian Space Research Organization that is ISRO with his dialogue with NASA in 1966 a satellite instructional television experiment was launched in 1975 and 1976 then credited for the first sounding rocket launcher in uh, almost in 1963. His project for the fabrication and the launch of the Indian satellite led for the first satellite Aryabhatta to put in orbit in 1975. So the main person. So you have the details and here you have uh, specified details about the Vikram Sarabhai. So this is about it. The next one, the children living in jails worries the Supreme Court. So this is with respect to a committee which would be headed by a retired judge of the Supreme Court formed to tackle the issue of the children who are living in the prisons because their mothers are convicts. So this is would be with respect to the mothers who are being convicted in the jails. With respect to them, the child's also been raised in the prisons. So your a committee is being set up to understand to a particular issue which has been happening with respect to the children living in the prisons. And they would be assisted by two or three central government officers to study the problem of the mothers and also the children living inside the prisons. And this order came after the Supreme Court amicus curie and advocate which has actually submitted a report showcasing that there are almost like 18 jails exclusively for women plus there are separate areas for women in the other particular jails. But there is a huge lack of the space for the women inmates. He said these jails were, were not modeled to the house women inmates, especially those with minor children staying with them. So this is with respect to the order came from the Supreme Court based on these particular grounds of the amicus curie. And the court said that the center should issue a notification and setting up of a committee and highlighting the importance of the prison reforms and also the fundamental life right of the life and dignity of their particular prisoners and the court also advised the center that the criminal sentence to imprisonment of uh, for a six months or for a year uh, they should not uh, uh, try to choke the particular uh, prisons by overflowing rather you can start allotting them the social services duties so that would actually make them more aware about the social service and at the same time not choking with the particular uh, prisons which is getting overflowed so this is about it just the committee has been set up right now so that they'll understand what is the issue which is happening with respect to the women prisons and also the children in there. That's about it. The next one, submarine training lass, says the CAG. So this is with respect to the CAG which has observed in a report that there are no proper facilities which is existing for the training Navy crew on various aspects of the damage. If there's any damage control or firefighting in the particular submarine, there is no proper facilities which is being given to the particular training training people in the Navy crew. And this is with respect to the 2014 IS Satavahana, which is a dedicated school for imparting all facets of the submarine training. So here it was a kind of a proposal which was being submitted to the submarine headquarters indicating that there is a requirement of a simulator to train a damage controller and a firefighting. But right now this proposal has not yet been accepted, approved by the competent authority is what the CAG report has been made a statement. And they are also talking about a limited practical training in an imparted through an attachment to the Navy's facilities for the damage control and the fighting which means that here the navy crew people are not being given with sufficient uh, knowledge or a training so that they can cope up with the damages and also with the controlling measures and also with the fighting back with the firefightings that's not been done and this is based on the airships so in the year to august 2013 what had happened is that the russian built kilo class submarine that is ins Sindhu Rakshak sank in Mumbai harbor after an explosion on board. This is almost killing like 18 sailors and in the next year a fire on board of INS Sindhu Ratna killed two officers. So they are spotting about the two important incidents which has happened with respect to lack of training in the year uh, 2013 in the month of August. So this was an issue and uh, simultaneously there was other issue which had happened. And training and damage control and fighting assumes even a greater importance as India index nuclear submarines into its fleece. As India is trying to index as much as nuclear submarines into it, which means that it's a right time that we have to focus on the damage control and also the fighting. That's a firefighting training which has to be taken into consideration. The critical need is that against this particular issues where we are not being given with a sufficient training, the Navy is in the process of inducting 
the two deep submergence and rescue vessel systems from the UK based firm which is critical in case of any disaster in depth, in depth of the seas. So the backdrop is there but we have to work on it and uh, as we are more looking, on, looking on to move on for further submarines, the two deep submergence which really might be an issue over the time. So this is the concern which, which has been on the light right now and here you have the ship which was actually the submarine which was actually been sunk it's about the red water you can just uh, look on to them and here you have the INS Sindurakshak issue what had happened also they have the test and other commissioned areas and all here. Um, the next one Ranil hands over India built houses so this is with respect to over 400 families living on the famed tea estates in Sri Lanka took a possession of their new houses built with Indian assistance. So this was Indian assistance was being given from long time and the construction of the homes is part of the India's commitment to build 4000 homes in the highlands, central highlands that is home to the Malayaha Tamils. And India is supporting the construction of 60,000 houses across the highlands, as many as 46,000 in the north and the east being built for displaced persons is already completed and 14,000 are now to be built in the central and the southern parts of the Hamlets. So again supporting for 60,000, 46 has been constructed and 14 more has been, 14,000 more has been had to be done. This is about it. The next one, our foreign direct investment at an HEP. So this is with respect to the government which is claiming that the total FDI flow scaled a new record in the financial year 2018. And the FDI flows into India seem to track its economic fortunes more closely than its political fortunes. So this is with respect to the FDI flows, is it based on the economic fortunes or the political part? So here it's been very clear that it is purely on the economic and nothing to do with the political thing. In the last 10 years, the strong GDP growth prints in India have inevitably been followed by the upsurge in FDI. So the largest annual jump in the FDI till date was almost from 7.6 billion in 2005 to 20.3 billion in 2006 which came about after improved its GDP growth from 7.8 percent to 9.3 percentage in 2000. So it makes clear that as a GDP that's economic growth is being shown here there is more the FDF funds which is being happening but there's nothing to do with the party which is being changing or the government which is being changing about it and here you have the complete details from 2003 to 2017 you can just look on to it. So LO1 is with respect to the FDI flows in India in billions and uh, red one is with respect to the FDI in India as percentage of the global pool. So this is about it. The next one, war of the currency kind. So this is with respect to the RBI governor Ojit Patel has warned global trade war could escalate into a currency war. So whatever we having a global trade war is might get into a currency war because the trade wars erupt when the countries impose the tit for tat tariffs on imported goods ostensibly to protect the domestic manufacturers. So this uh, trade wars means especially like it tit for a tad. You impose a duty and I do it and you do it more the tariff and I do it. So this is what it happens when it comes to import goods. This, this is especially to protect the domestic manufacturers. So the currency wars was triggered when nations either allow their currency to weaken appreciably or devalue them to gain a competitive advantage over a trade rivals. If the other countries react by devaluing their respective currencies to retain the competitiveness, this could lead to instability in the markets. So this particular para which really talks about the instability in the market, what leads to an instability. So it is with respect to weakening the currencies or you devaluating the <coughs> currency to retain the competitiveness. So you should first understand what is a devaluation. So devaluation is a policy tool to reduce the value of the currency first and foremost relative to other currencies which is a fixed exchange rate. So it is used to set the relative prices of domestic and international goods and services at a new footing. So devaluation is different from depreciation. So how is it different because which is a decrease in the currency's value due to market forces of demand and supply when the exchange rate of the currency is being floating. So this makes proper understanding to what is a devaluation and what is a depreciation. And does devaluation help? There are three major reasons. One, to boost the exports. So how it boosts the exports? The lowered value of the domestic currency will make it less expensive for the foreign buyers. 
to obtain the local currency to buy the locally produced goods and services so that the exports would be more boosted on situation of it more goods and services would be sold abroad so this would be helping the domestic businesses reliant on the export markets such as software services companies pharma firms and the seafood exporters the second one this is to shrink the trade deficit so this is basically with respect to the devaluation which has been made for the exports making more competitiveness and also makes the imports more expensive and making it hence uh, very less affordable so that the uh, this might reduce reduce the volumes of the non essential imports and making it a uh, kind of a narrow trade gap the third one is with respect to reduce the debt and servicing burden so here are the nations with the uh, sovereign debt they actually sell the domestically and find it more advantageous to let the currency weaken and it helps lower the national cost of debt servicing so this would be the three important uh, uh, devaluation which might really help in was the rupee ever devalued so this is taking the history of india was the rupee being devalued in june 1966 hit by the drought of the two major wars that is with china and pakistan to what we had india devalued the rupee by 36.5 percentage again in 1991 at the time of the new economic reforms the balance of the payment crisis exacerbated by the sharp spike in oil prices in the wake of the gulf war spurred india to devalue the rupee in a two step downward adjustment of 18 to 19 percentage which means that earlier we have devalued our indian rupee twice so first understand properly to what is a devaluation how it is different from depreciation and does a devaluation really help up with the situation so this is about it and question for the day different slabs of gst for 20 watts and the role of the controller and auditor general for 20 So these were the important news items for 13th of August 2018. Thank you.